Hello fellow creatives, it is I, the Ghetto Boy Otaku, doing something a bit different. Today we're going to do a sketchbook tour. I have a few sketchbooks um, piled up, ready for me to record these sort of things. And this is, they're, in, they're going to be released in chronological order. I think this is important so that you can see, I guess, get a sense of how I've progressed over time. Like this isn't my very first sketchbook I ever made. For most of my like until recently i didn't even really use sketchbooks i would just use draw on printer paper i have a big folder which eventually i will do which has a better progression i guess of several years worth of work but this is my first of the sketchbooks so let's get into it the first thing you'll notice it's not actually even a sketchbook don't worry this is the only one that's done on lined paper but this was back in the 23rd of July 2021. So this is a while back. Um, these are some sketches of um, Yugi from the manga. These two are from panels from chapter one. And then I like did the eye and it says other Yugi here, but you can't read it very well. Yeah, this is me just copying straight um, style. This was an OC that I was working, so this is the next day, I was working on a one-shot. Um, pretty sure this one was Mysteries and Magic. There should be more designs and stuff later. This design was inspired by, um, well, I mean, at the time my art was very Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, inspired, plus the hair reminds me of Red from Pokemon Adventures. Yeah, Mysteries and Magic. It was like, essentially the one-shot was where he was a detective in a magic-y world. He... And he had to kind of learn to take things a bit slower. So the first time he kind of rushes through the case and then comes back and realizes, oh, he stuffed up. Um, okay, looks like I actually, that looks like it's practically the same design as the one above it. Um, just in a different pose. Okay, uh, this was another character. She was like the female. She was like meant to be the work assistant, but then would be like the twist villain at the end. Because I think it was like it was a killer who was in the town. I think that was what the conflict was. Um, I know this design does change a couple of times across the sketchbook. This was meant to be the um guy that runs the place. And I mean, I still struggle with older guys, but like I'd mostly drawn things from like at this stage from like my record. I'd mostly drawn teenagers, so I struggled. And yeah, at the time I hated the color and. So this is another redesign. This is a redesign of the previous one. This one's a lot better. I like the hairnet. That's actually kind of cool. Um, get some sense of sort of medieval. Still like very simple. And I mean, I'm not sure why I went with fishnets. I'm not sure that fishnets were really worn very much during any sort of historical time. I'm not sure when fishnets were invented. Um, but that's the one thing that kind of confusing me oh i should also mention this is like a backpack thing where they pretty much everyone has like a grimoire that's like where your spells are but like if the grimoire gets destroyed it you also get destroyed so um they had to all keep it very safe okay so this is a redesign of him um the reason why he has three belts is well i mean from a design point was just because i was into Yu-Gi-Oh and they wear lots of belts but in story he essentially really wanted a belt and had like three people buy him a belt and he didn't want to, like, make anyone sad and, like, pick between them. So he wears all three every day. Um, yeah, you can still definitely see the, um, same sort of couple of influences. I've got lots of, um, no one looks like their clothes are ironed. Because I was trying to copy, I guess, yu gi -Oh sort of look without understanding clothing folds. This is more smaller attempts of, um, the mentor guy. You've got the eyeball. I feel like that should... So this is still within a couple of days it started, so I don't know how long I had this sketchbook. Also, I didn't draw on the back of the pages. Um, and I feel like this whole thing was done in pencil. Then I don't think there was a lot of colour in it. So I currently, in my modern, like, current ones, I try to draw on the back of pages where I can, you know, not to waste um, space and stuff, but um, I just didn't decide. This book was actually a ske a, like a book I'd had for a while, but... um. A friend, I think, got it for me, and initially, because if I go back, like, you can, 
see that like there were pages ripped out. Initially, I used this to write vocabulary because I thought, wait, 2021, this would have been, when I made this, this would have been year nine. So I probably had the book for a bit before that. So yes. Like, I don't know, 13-year-old me thought it was super cool to, like, have a, a notebook dedicated to writing vocabulary. Um, yeah, I was super cool at school. Um, I think the pendant was important, considering that that's, like, something I've got here. And But I can't remember. Like, I wrote this a while ago, and part of why I just didn't end up doing it is I had... I purposely started something that I'm like, I don't want to be too attached to it because, like, at that stage, every I was struggling to write anything because I was too attached. And then I just, I didn't care about the story. So I was like, why would anyone else care? And then I'm complaining that I can't write adults. I'm guessing he's meant to be cursed or something. I wonder why I ended up going with these sort of, like, style of eyes. Um, interesting choice. Uh... He kind of reminds me of, um, is it Sans from Undertale? Um, this was meant to be when she was revealed to be a bad guy. She was gonna, like, this outfit feels really spacey, which is interesting because that's not the setting, and I still was struggling with colors. I still struggle with colors, I'm not gonna lie. And again, okay, I think she was meant to be wearing this underneath her outfit, so that's probably why she has the fishnets, but I don't know how she was able to change her shoes and stuff. This, this looks kind of out of, like, it looks spacey when everything else is fantasy, which probably wouldn't have worked too well. Okay, so now we're in August 2021. These are little ones. Um, I don't know what this was, but I didn't finish it. So that's something I drew. This was, I was working on a fan fiction uh, that pretty much had all the Yu-Gi-Oh characters aged up. So this is an aged up Mokuba. So like Mokuba from Yu-Gi-Oh when he's an adult. I was very into Yu-Gi-Oh at this time, so I feel like... 99% of this sketchbook is Yu-Gi-Oh related, but he's got like glasses now, his hair's longer, he's got like a coat. His, his outfit was more inspired by his Dark Side of Dimensions look, which um, he's got like a bit more of a formal appearance compared to in the um, original show. This was meant to be aged up Yu-Gi. This is meant to be when he's like 40 and with kids, but he definitely doesn't look old enough. Like, But I guess it is, it was, I remember I did struggle because... Yugi's um kind of a very young looking character like he looks significantly younger than his age is already in the series and then trying to carry that over um I do like how I did the jacket like this I must have had some good references because this looks significantly better than a lot of the other stuff in here uh this is meant to be an aged up Mai but she just looks like Mai but with the less revealing outfit this was my um, Yu-Gi-Oh! OC, who I, sh uh, I don't remember what her name is, but she was like, I was making my own sort of Yu-Gi-Oh! series that was going to be following the manga canon, not the um, anime canon, so certain details were changed and stuff to suit, because they do have different laws and stuff. I'm, this character, this isn't the first time I'd drawn this character, I must have had sketch, this was like, finally getting it right. And I remember I tried several times, but it must have been on random pieces of paper. Hopefully I find that in the um, art folder thing when I go through it. But uh, yeah, so she's got hair. Uh, should be... Yeah, so this is her eye. So essentially she finds the dye of Hermes and long story short is like possessed by a, a daemon. Which is like a demon, but before demons were like... they then. Pretty much the mythological creature that existed before de the demons evolved from in mythology and stuff. Um, so that's why she's got like the little eyeglass. I remember this pose being so happy with it. Because um, it was like more difficult than anything. Like this was like the best pose at the time I'd ever done. And then ruining it because I hated the color palette. Um, but this did teach me a valuable lesson. So, um, this was me drawing a smaller one and then doing the colours again. But this, the previous one, which you can see is... I'm surprised it didn't go onto this page. Oh, it went a little bit here. Maybe, um, you can see a little stain. But I'm surprised considering the kind of paper it is, it didn't go through, like, a hundred pages. Because I have had that in other, um... Because I had a lot of books where it was, like, just... I would use the books 
I had at school and then at the end of the year we just reclaim them and start from the back and just fill it with drawing and writing and stuff. Um, but they would go through a lot of pages. But yeah, I'm surprised. This paper is actually pretty good for markers, except for the lines. You don't usually want to work on lined paper. Um, this was meant to be the rival character. Um, he was sort of meant to be, he was a year older. Uh, he took his Gakaran, which is the uniform, and then bleached it. And he had like the, the Jojo things. Because I, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! was already very inspired by Jojo's. And yeah, I don't really have much to say on him. I, he's, he was sort of inspired by Kaiba, which probably comes through in his hair. This was the friend. She changed a lot of times. She took, she was just difficult to get. Um, I would say the least Yu-Gi-Oh looking thing is the hair. And I know the uniform's based on Anzu's uniform, but with a tie. And also with the longer socks that she wears in the movie. But originally she had like the scrunchy socks because that was more in fashion when the original came out. Uh, 85. I'm assuming that's page 85 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Is that and... Yeah, I don't recommend drawing that small and expecting it to go well. I remember because I was like, oh, I'm going to be drawing Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I need to get used to the monsters. So I've got like the dragon. I don't know what dragon that is. Or if I, I don't think, I wouldn't have been able to make that up. But I don't know what I referenced. I think this one was made up or, I, I, I don't know. I'm not as familiar with my Yu-Gi-Oh card. So if someone recognizes this crocodile, uh, please comment and tell me, um, what what he is. Uh, I hadn't played Danganronpa at this stage, but I think I just liked the um expression. But it is interesting that Junko is like probably the first Danganronpa thing I've drew because she's not my favorite. Um, the face is a bit small relative to the eyes, but yeah, I I remember I had like a board on Pinterest that was just a heap of different anime expressions, which were most of them were like edits for profile pictures and I think I just liked thought that the pose was and expression was cool I know what this is because I wrote it down so I had like a just I don't have many Yu-Gi-Oh cards but I remember I just found one that looked cool and was shiny and stuff and drew it um I actually don't mind how this looks it still looks pretty cool I don't think I could draw dragons much better but I don't really draw a lot of dragons and it looks pretty three-dimensional which is pretty cool um, that would be Dark Magician, Marshmallow, Dark Magician Girl, possibly also Dark Magician Girl, all one of the variants. I I'm guessing I was just lazy and didn't finish any of them. I do like Marshmallow, Marshmallow has saved me several times, and it's just funny to have this, like, thing that can't be killed. This was meant to be, like, a, a rival character, um... He was meant to feel like luck based. He's I'm, I'm pretty sure later on I have a better version because yeah, even at the time I didn't like it and yeah, no, I don't particularly like. And then I tried different hairstyles and I just made like Sasuke Sonic, which is what I say like gosh, the, it, I've got little writing of gosh, it looks like Shaman King Sonic Sasuke. Quite the description. This character was inspired by in Yu-Gi-Oh. There's a um. A one-turn kill deck, which is a frog. So he was meant to look like this cute, friendly kid, and then, like, destroy and obliterate his opponents in one turn. I mean, he's a bit creepy looking, but that was the concept behind him. So that's why he's got the, like, goofy jumper. This was meant to be just another random duelist. Um, I think I just designed something. I don't think there was much behind it. I don't mind her, like, the, her dress in concept. These were meant to be the announcers, so he was based on, I think he's from, there's a character in, it's one of the early few chapters where essentially the guy's just really loud and doesn't care and has to get a taste of his own medicine and these are others. This one was meant to just be that he doesn't really want to be there and she was, I guess she's got distinct Yu-Gi-Oh vibes with that hair. That hair, dang, that would be difficult to maintain. And her earring is a level symbol. I'm glad I actually explained and had a note. Because I'm like, I feel like that earring's something important. It kind of just looks like a dragon ball, to be honest. Um. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I... That 
that was a technical difficulty. Um, this was me trying a new style and I didn't like it at the time and still don't like it. Um, I'm guessing I tried to combine a more toilet bound Hanako kun because that was what that reminds me of and I feel like I probably had started watching it at this time. This was meant to be um, her in her possessed form. Um, and yeah, at the time didn't like it, still don't like it. Uh, this was just a random sketch of like monsters and you can definitely see the Yu-Gi-Oh fashion sense kind of like with the alternate styles and stuff. Um, I kind of like this guy, this like weird turkey monster thing. He's kind of cool. Uh, this was just probably a page that just wasn't happening. Uh, yeah, my brother drew this. Um, he has no respect for my brother. <laughs> um, I don't think he's really scribbled in any recent ones, but yeah, he. I think he just like saw the page and just like decided to draw that. Uh, this is the friend. Um, so I think that's meant to be like an Ita bag. Ita bag? Not sure how you say it. Um, the bags that have like the see-through thing so you can display like pins and stuff. Um, and like this drivelly sock. And hair. I think that was meant to be me drawing mob in my own style. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, my style is definitely very different to that now. So I guess that is a... Actually, I drew recently, well, actually, it was about a year ago now, but I do have a drawing of Mob on my, um, Instagram, so that'd be cool to, like, I guess you do, ha I do have a comparison for that character. This was Reagan and Teru, also in my style. I like how I, I drew, like, the eyes first, and then I've got, like, Reagan's got the little twinkle in his eyes. That's cool. Um, don't mind them. I, was, I think I have an oof like I was sad with Dimple, but I like the Dimple. Um, this was me drawing, um, like, Izuku Midoriya and Ochako Uraraka from My Hero Academia in the Yu-Gi-Oh style. So, essentially, Deku's just got, like, Yugi's armbands on his uniform. He's got a belt and just looks like he's has an eye in his uniform. And I guess, like, shape... Ochako's is sort of inspired by like how I would think that like Takahashi would have designed Ochako. Um, so like the top's inspired by my Valentine. You've got like the belt's got the bit more details like how Yugi's does. You got the deck box. You got the unnecessary arm belts. Plus I um gave her a choker because like everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh has a choker with like the two dot things because I know the two dots is important part of her design meant to be that the designer put that in. So I wanted to include that. Um, plus I guess she's got the bump, like what Taya has. Her face doesn't look particularly Yu-Gi-Oh, but I guess her outfit does. It's definitely more revealing than her actual outfit, but most of the females in, like, Yu-Gi-Oh, like, especially the original, had pretty revealing outfits, like what Taya and Mai are probably the two most common reoccurring ones, and they have pretty... Short skirts and shirts and stuff. I mean, Shizu's got is covered up, but she's also Egyptian, which is if she wasn't didn't have that specific context, she probably would be designed like the others. This was another attempt at the friend. Um, the hair's really <laughs> that hair is really spiky. I like the the earrings. Like I think they're meant to be like the um, pyramids and stuff. And you can see how my attempts for sleeves and stuff have kind of. They've kind of settled down a bit. I'm um, still struggling with pleats, I would say. More fishnets. This was meant to be like a guess a, because they were meant to be a lot of the duelists in the series were sort of, I guess, celebrity style. Um, I feel like her hair is inspired by someone not from the original. Um, those eyebrows, <laughs> dang. Um, yeah, definitely. I guess probably inspired by my my Valentine as well, based on body shape this was the redesign of that um luck guy from before um so i think he's more inspired by like duke devlin with the dice he's got like on his face he's got the, the four symbols in um like a deck of cards as in like not a Yu-Gi-Oh deck like a deck of playing like your your normal playing cards um he's got an iron i actually don't mind this design i wouldn't 
probably try and draw the exact same style. I, like, I would probably wouldn't draw the face like that because I don't tend to do that as much anymore. But I would say this is probably one of my favorite designs in this sketchbook. So well done past me. You get the tick. This is the friend again. Another attempt. Um, those arms. Are, yeah, you can tell I don't know my anatomy. Um, well, I, I can tell now that I'm better at it, but like those arms are a bit noodly and like they just look like I just drew a line, line, rather than drew them in like um, sections, taking into account curves and stuff. It also looks like I possibly didn't draw like a person underneath, so it looks like these. I drew the skirt and then just like stuck the legs on. Whereas now I would probably draw like the, um, I would draw like a shape and then like draw the legs and then like put the skirt on top so that like the legs are still in a reasonable spot. Um, but still I don't mind it, it's not too bad. Um, this, this, this is what I was talking about earlier, so I learned that because I stuffed up those colours, um, I, I've developed since then where I'll draw like a really simplified version of just like the basic shapes and then use that to colour in and test out colour palettes before putting it on the one that I've actually put effort into. I don't like how the hair... Something went wrong with this hair, but I I don't mind the colours. Um, and the shading's cool, I like the white. Um, overall okay. Um, this must have been when I finally got the friend down, so that's very similar to the last one I saw. I do like the sense of movement on the skirt, that's kind of cool. Um, I like the colours, but I'm partial to those colours, so you can see, like, I was testing, so I think I end... I must have ended up going with that one, which makes sense, because it was the last one I, um, did. I probably tested until I was like, yep, that's, that suits. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> would that get uncomfortable wearing like fishnets like underneath socks I've never done that like I don't dress like that but I'm just curious if that would get uncomfortable um I guess if anyone wears stuff like that this was me designing their school uniform so I because a lot of um anime don't use really like particularly long skirts I wanted to do that but I still so this is the classic um like sailor girl uniform with like the red and black was the style color palette because you usually have red and black or sometimes it's like the white with like the blue and still like red accents like what Sailor Moon has um but I wanted to still look Yu-Gi-Oh by like adding the belt but yeah they were gonna, that was the uniform they were gonna wear this is I don't know if that's an exi- I think this must be my design, because that sword looks kind of awkward, like, it kind of looks too goofy to be an actual proper Yu-Gi-Oh design, unless I just did it badly. This was me trying to draw Edward Elric in a Yu-Gi-Oh style, and just realizing that, like, the way his hair sits, like, it doesn't have enough volume and it looked funny. But I've got, like, he's got, like, the shirt underneath, um, on his sleeve, he's got, like, the symbol that he usually wears on his jacket, on both sleeves. Um, got the glove. Yeah, I, that's meant to be Edward Elric. This was another character. I just can't believe the difference between, like, these two faces. Like, they were drawn immediately after each other. And, like, this one's just, like, look kind of alien because the eyes are, like, not right. And then this one doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm getting towards the end of the sketchbook, I can tell, because... This stuff carries on into the next one, like this character and things. But this has essentially this was from he's the main character of a series called Lament of the Deuteragonist. So in the world he leaves him, he's not the like the protagonist of the story is the other character, but it's told from his so he's the perspective of the actual story he's told in, but the story he exists in, he's the Deuteragonist. Deuteragonist is like the second character but essentially he's meant to look as protagonist as possible and I'm pretty sure his name meant something in like Japanese is like protagonist um but yeah he's got like a tragic backstory and like is really overpowered he's like they're like psychics and stuff and he's been searching he can hear the narrator he's been searching for the protagonist and like was expecting him to be with someone like with even more fancy spiky hair 
and like even more powerful so that like he could take down the bad guys that have been you know sort of holding his captive since they massacred his parents and stuff and then comes across the actual protagonist who doesn't even know he's psychic yet um and is extremely disappointed because he's like how is this wimp the protagonist and not me with my cool spiky hair um but yeah you can definitely tell the Yu-Gi-Oh ness coming through which I mean Yu-Gi-Oh does have very protagonisty hair so this was me designing the um the the main character guy um so meant to look kind of shy and stuff I'm pretty sure the the next page I think is the last page um which I think he, I actually oh no there, there might be a couple more um so this is what I ended up going with for him. Um, I, I liked Toilet Baron Hanako's hat, so that's why he's got a hat. Um, he's got the hair. So yeah, that's what I ended up going with. And these were meant to be just others. You, yeah, I'm at I'm at the end because as you can see, there's like the um, because it's meant to have this like elastic. So yeah, that's the first sketchbook um this one doesn't have a lot of exercises i guess of me purposely trying to improve this is kind of before training arc and stuff um yeah i hope you enjoyed this is actually my second recording the first one i took way too long uh, and thanks for watching uh actually and especially thanks for watching this far in i know that like this is still pretty long and I'm kind of scared how long some of the others will take because this is a lot thinner than some of my other sketchbooks. I'm not good at being succinct. Um, but yeah, I wish you all the best. And